Hi everybody, this is Fiona and Julie from um, Access and Lifelong Learning in UCD. You're very welcome to our webinar on supports for students with disabilities. Sorry, what's not going on? So just before we um, start our session, I'll just introduce you to our team. So we're part of the wider Access and Lifelong Learning team, but the people that you can see on the screen are people who specifically have a remit around supporting students with disabilities. So I'm there, I'm Julie Tong, the Disability Officer, and Fiona Quinn, who's with me today, is our Disability Support Specialist. And we also have Barbara, who's our Deputy Director, and we've two occupational therapists, which are Ethna and Kim, and Assistive Technology Specialist, Sue, and Tom, who's our Learning Support Tutor, and we also have Emily, who uh, is part of the welcome desk, and she uh, helps students with all the general queries that they have when they pop into the office. So this is the Access and Lifelong Learning Centre. Any of you who have been to UCD before might be familiar with the lake and the James Joyce Library building. So we're right at the very centre of the campus on the first floor of the James Joyce Library building. And we have a big centre which is really busy and it's used by lots of students for a whole lot of different reasons. Uh, so we don't just support students with disabilities, we also provide workshops for all students um, in the university and we also support mature students, students who are studying part-time, students from low-income backgrounds and lots of others as well. So it's a very busy centre and it's very welcoming for any student who comes through the door. So just to give you an overview of our session today, we're going to talk about the disability supports that we provide for students, how students access disability support, who knows that they receive disability support, because we know that some students are reluctant to come forward because they're not sure who will know about um, that they're receiving supports from us. Then Fiona's gonna talk about our academic skills supports, our scholarship programmes, and our plans for the summer. If you have any questions throughout the session, you can pop them into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we will be able to answer questions at the end. But you can also email questions to us after the session and our email address is disability at ucd.ie. So in terms of our disability supports, um, probably the most used supports that we have are exam and classroom accommodations. And those are the ones that most people would be familiar with already. So exam accommodations would be things like sitting your exam in a smaller venue on campus with some additional time. And classroom accommodations might be something like note taking supports. So that would be where a student is provided with the lecture slides and they are given a recording device so that they can go back over the lecture afterwards. Sue, our assistive technology specialist, provides lots of technology for students and she also provides training on how to use the technology. And she also gives students advice on apps that they can use um, that they can download on their own devices and also all of the accessibility features that their own devices have as well. The All Centre that you saw in the previous photo is open to students all the time and we're not on campus at the moment unfortunately but when we are students are welcome to drop in with their queries at any time. Disability support staff then are available to do needs assessments and I'll tell you a bit more about needs assessments in a second. We also have drop-in hours for students, so that's where students can just call in and speak to us at uh, particular times in the day without an appointment. You can also book an appointment with a member of disability support staff, and you can also email, email us anytime. And as I said before, our email is disability at ucd.ie, and we get back to students very quickly on that channel. So how does disability support work? Well, it all starts with the needs assessment and I'm going to tell you more about the actual needs assessment in a few moments. So all students who wish to receive disability support must attend for a needs assessment and meet with a member of staff. We really focus a lot of our supports on first year students and that's so that we can make sure that students have all the skills that they need in order to fulfil their potential uh, throughout their time in UCD. We focus very much on independent learning because we want students to be able to um, enjoy their time on the campus and not be reliant on the specialist supports provided by ourselves and we also want our graduates to be able to compete on the job market with their peers when they graduate. 
students very much determine the level of contact with us. So all students must come and have a needs assessment, as I said. But after that, it's really up to the student how much they wish to remain in contact with the service after that. So what is a needs assessment? So this is a one-to-one -one meeting with a member of staff, somebody like me or Fiona, and we meet to agree on a support plan for the student. No supports can be put in place without the student attending for a needs assessment. And this is because the supports are really quite different to other educational environments. So we need to make sure that you know everything that is available to you. But also we need you to understand how the supports work and what's available should you need something later on in your degree programme. If you are eligible for DARE, the CAO will provide UCD with your disability documentation, so you don't need to provide any evidence to us. Sometimes students who apply or who are eligible for DARE think that they automatically get supports when they come to UCD. But this is not the case because we need to work out with you what you want to use. So all students, including those who come through DARE, must book a needs assessment appointment. And you can do this just by emailing us at our email address. All other students who wish to access disability support need to provide appropriate evidence of their disability. And there's very detailed information on what is required on our website. And you can also contact us at disability.ecd.ie with any questions in relation to the documentation that's required. So at the needs assessment, the student and the uh, member of staff We'll discuss um, the types of supports maybe that the student has used in the past and we make some recommendations based on our experience of what's worked for other students. We also look at your evidence of disability and a lot of the supports are based on national guidelines and the national guidelines are there to make sure that similar supports are available to students with disabilities in all Irish colleges. So in order to book a needs assessment students first have to make sure that they have the right documentation I just remind you that if you're a DARE applicant that we will already have your documentation but if not you need to make sure that you have your documentation before you book a needs assessment appointment. Unfortunately we can't put any supports in place until we have received the documentation. The documentation can either be a report from a specialist confirming your diagnosis or you can get your specialist to complete the evidence of disability form which can be downloaded from our website. Some students with disabilities are not in the care of a specialist and in that case you can ask another health professional who is familiar with your disability to fill in the evidence of disability form. However, it's really important that if you are in the care of a specialist that you get either a letter or the form completed by your specialist. This is because sometimes we have to, some of the supports that we provide require funding and we need that evidence in order to access the funding on your behalf. So if you're in the care of a specialist, please make sure that you get them to complete your form. And if not, you can get a health professional familiar with your disability to complete the form for you. So that might be somebody like your GP. Once the students have their documentation, they can book a needs assessment by emailing disability at ucd.ie. And when our centre is back open again, of course, you'll be able to call in and make an appointment in person as well. So who knows that a student gets disability support? So students are provided with a very detailed privacy statement. We also adhere to strict confidentiality and data protection practices. Information about a student's supports are recorded on the student record system, but there's very limited access to this information. We communicate information to module coordinators via our class lists. Module coordinators are the people in charge of each subject. So most students, full-time students, do six subjects per trimester and there's a module coordinator in charge of each one of those subjects and that person is responsible to me, uh, for making sure that you receive your supports and accommodations. They have a class list that tells them everybody who's enrolled in the module and it also tells them if, you, if a student has additional uh, support requirements. Students are also issued then with a certificate of disability support and this helps students to disclose their disability to anyone else that they want to tell or to ask for supports. So I'm going to pass over to Fiona now and she's going to take you through the remainder of the slides. So um, 
I'm going to bring you through now um, the exam accommodations. This is often an area of accommodations that students are very interested in um, and rightly so. So we ask that if students want um, exam, exam accommodations to be put in place that they book in for their needs assessment by week six uh, of the trimester. So a little over a month after you started your time in UCD. And the reason for this is that we can get all the exam accommodations in place before your actual exams. Um, if you have any in-class tests or locally arranged exams, the ones that maybe aren't in the RDS um, at the end of the year, um, you will need to contact your module coordinator to request these exam accommodations. And uh, to do that, you use the certificate of disability that you would have gotten in an email from your needs assessor after you've had your needs assessment. Um, before the end of trimester exams uh, in previous years, um, that the, the um, exams team have looked after that for you. So it's just for the in-class tests, such as midterms, that you need to do that. Um, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about academic skills and our workshops that we host. So um, beyond what you will be discussing with your needs assessor in your needs assessment, we offer, also offer a lot of supports in our um, unit and they include the academic skills workshops. So academic skills are anything from taking notes in class um, to being able to write and reference in your essays. And these are often skills that you maybe wouldn't learn in an actual lecture where you're learning a lot of content and knowledge, and knowledge but they are essential for you to be achieving your uh, best when you're in university. So we host uh, workshops um, once a week normally during term time where students can drop in and uh, you don't need to book, you can bring your lunch, it's a very um, relaxed environment for you to come in and one of the members of our teams will present a workshop on a particular topic. You can pick and choose from what topics you'd like to come and listen to um, and we also offer them online so we have recordings of all these workshops so that you can access them in your own time, revise, or if you need a particular skill a little bit sooner than maybe it's on in person, you can have a look and, um, and study up on that skill. We also offer a lot of technology support and we have been offering sessions with digital ambassadors to help our students um, understand and get comfortable with all of the technology which um, might be required for your course. So um, in previous years, these are the topics we've covered for our academic skills workshops. And as you can see, there's a really wide range of topics, everything from those very practical things like proofreading and writing to more well-being based topics such as self-care um, and also things like working in groups and making presentations. Um, so, as I said, you can drop in on a few of these or all of these, however you want to engage, but they are there for you. I'd like to talk a little bit about our scholarships. So there are two main scholarships which I think will be of interest to students who are engaging with our service. And the first is the NUI scholarship for students with a physical or sensory disability. Um, if you are eligible for this scholarship, your needs assessor will bring it to your attention during the needs assessment and we'll discuss the application with you. It is a once-off payment for undergraduates. Um, but the Coram Nefena scholarship um, is a more uh, long-term, I suppose, scholarship. It covers the complete duration of your course with payments twice a year. And so if you're taking a four year course, you'll have it for the four years. If you were taking medicine, for instance, which is six years, you would have it for the six years. And um, it is quite a competitive scholarship, but it is also the largest scholarship of its kind in Ireland. So there is definitely um, lots to go around there. And um, the applications open in autumn 2020, and we'll have lots of details about how to apply at our All Welcome and on our website. It's important to note that this is a means tested scholarship um, and all students who uh, are engaging with access and lifelong learning are eligible to apply if they meet those, um, those economic need requirements. 
So um, beyond access and lifelong learning, there are lots of other supports available in UCD. And if you as a student have any questions or feel you need support, you can always come to access and lifelong learning. But sometimes we will signpost you to those other services and their expertise to make sure that you're getting the best supports which are available to you. So for instance, if you came to Access and Lifelong Learning and were concerned about maths or writing, we might refer you on over to the Math Support Centre or the Writing Support Centre, which are um, really well-respected services within UCD. If you came to Access and Lifelong Learning and you were concerned maybe about your mental health, uh, we might suggest you um, follow up with the free counselling service in UCD. Additionally, there is a medical centre center in UCD, and then there are lots of other uh, people around to help support you, such as the student advisors, which are in charge of their um, each programme. There are peer mentors who are students, maybe second, third year, fourth year students in UCD, who understand what you're going through as they've just been through it themselves, and they're there to support you and advise you. And there are other financial supports which are more general in UCD, such as the Student Welfare Fund. Um, and in addition to having our own welcome, which is the All Welcome, which is uh, kind of designed to give you a head start in UCD, there are also program specific um, orientations. So you'll have a lot of time to get used to um, the campus or, and lectures and everything when you arrive in UCD. So I suppose summer at UCD, what happens there? Certainly when I was a student, I thought everyone went home for the summer, but that's definitely not the case. So um, we are still on our emails and you can contact us at any time um, disab um, disability at ucd.ie and we'll get back to you as soon as we can during the office hours. Um, we, you should also be keeping an eye on our website um, for all the up-to-date information on our events. Our website is www.ucd.ie forward slash ALL um, and we keep that very much up-to-date with all resources for our students and um, events that are coming up. And then I suppose our team are really busy planning for the year to come um, and I suppose it will be a slightly different year than any other. But we are keen to keep our all welcome program and as you can see in that little zoom call there we've all been meeting to discuss um, this incredibly important event to us and to make sure that all of our students are welcomed um, as they should be to UCD. Um, so we are, in, uh, we are still available and still um, planning to welcome you next year. So I suppose now um, we'll open up for some questions. So there uh, is a little Q&A box you'll see at the bottom of your screen. And if you want to pop any questions in there, you can. Um, and also we answer a lot of different questions on our website, uh, again, which is www.ucd.ie forward slash ALL. And if you don't want to answer, ask a question at the moment, you can always put it um, over to us in an email if you, maybe it's quite a specific question and you'd like a, a personal response. The uh, email is disability at ucd.ie and one of our team will be able to pick up on it there. But uh, myself and Julie will now have a little Q&A session. So Julie, I suppose the question might be, um, I'm a mature student and I would like to apply for disability support. I haven't come in through DARE. Can I still apply for disability support? Yes, of course. So all students who have a disability are entitled to supports. Um, so it doesn't matter what entry pathway you took to get to UCD. It's just really important that you let us know that you're, that you're here because we won't know automatically. Um, so if you can, when we're back on campus, you can of course call into the centre. It's it, at that very central location that I described at the beginning. So right in the middle of the campus in the James Joyce Library building on the first floor. So you can just call in there and ask to speak to someone or, to, or ask for an appointment. Or alternatively, and probably the easiest way, is just to email us at disability at ecd.ie and we'll take it from there and make sure that you get an appointment and get the supports that you need. Okay. Uh, and then our next question is, what kind of supports are in place for students with dyslexia? 
Okay, so there's a really wide range of supports for students with dyslexia. Students with dyslexia, dyslexia make up the largest cohort of students who access our supports. So the first thing, of course, is the needs assessment. Um, students with dyslexia will have an educational psychologist report which provides loads of detail um, about how they learn and any kind of challenges they might have with particular aspects of learning, like reading and writing and spelling and things like that. So we would look at that report with you um, and then we would offer accommodations on that basis. Um, so all students with dyslexia are entitled to exam accommodations in third level, regardless of whether or not you received them in your education previous to that. So um, most students in UCD do their exams in the RDS, which is a huge conference cent centre about 20 minutes away from the main campus. But students who have dyslexia and other students with disabilities have the option of sitting their exams on campus in a smaller venue. And there you get some additional time. It's 10 minutes per hour. And you're also given, most of our exams are two hours. So students would get two hours and 20 minutes to complete their exam. Students are also provided with labels to attach to their exams so that they're not marked down for um, errors in spelling and grammar, for example. Um, and we've lots of students who use those labels in UCD and our academic staff are very familiar with them. So you don't need to worry about getting all of your spelling and grammar correct in a timed exam because that will be taken into account for you. And then we've other students who sometimes use, need to use additional supports on top of those as well. So that might be a uh, reader and we provide electronic readers for students so it's a little pen that you can use to read your exam script or a word or two in your exam or you can re read the whole thing you have headphones to use with it and um, there's also a range of classroom supports for students so we can make sure that you're provided with all of the lecture slides that your uh, lecturers use in their classes you can also use uh, note-taking supports which would usually be some type of technology some students use a recording pen to take notes with and other students uh, who just prefer to take notes on a laptop can use um, note taking software on that laptop which records the lecture while you're taking your notes so it's a really good way to go back over things that you feel like you might have missed in the lecture and it can also be used as a good revision too. We also provide students with dyslexia with a really sophisticated proofreading software it's called Grammarly and um, so we really encourage students to use that when they're doing their continuous assessments, such as essays and report writing and things like that. And it's really important that students with dyslexia attend the academic skills workshops because there's lots of things there that would really help them um, develop those academic skills and make sure that they fulfill their potential. And we have a learning support tutor as well who's available for students with dyslexia. So students who've attended the academic skills workshops and still feel they need some support in certain areas can get a one-to-one -one appointment with our learning support tutor who will be able to assist them there. Really good and I think that it's really important to know that each um, needs assessment is done on an individual basis for each student and it's up to the student as well what supports they'd like to take from what's offered and you know it, it's a real discussion and the student's really involved uh, um, in the process as well which I think um, students always like. So I suppose our next question is, um, will the office in UCD be open in the new year? <laughs> I think the short answer is yes, um, but we will of course have to adhere to whatever the current guidelines are at that time in terms of social distancing. So yes, the office will be open and we can't wait to get back to the office, we miss it. Um, so it will be open in some capacity, but we will have to stick to the, the government's guidance um, as well. So we'll be keep, keeping everybody informed as to how that's going to work. And we're also putting lots of contingency plans in place over the summer so that we have um, online options for students who aren't able to attend the campus as well. Perfect. And then another question we have is, um, I received supports in school. Will my supports be the same as I'm getting in school? And I suppose you covered that a little bit in the dyslexia question there, but... Uh, yeah, know. absolutely. So if the supports that you had in school were what worked for you and you thought they were really good, then absolutely we can replicate them um, in UCD. Um, but you might find that there's some additional supports that we have that weren't available to you in school. Um, quite often students haven't used a lot of the technology tools that we recommend, so we'd really um, encourage students to have a go with some of those and see if they help. 
Um, but yes, you can get all the supports that you got in school. But if there's things that you used in school that you prefer not to um, use in third level, that's fine too. And I suppose one thing that we didn't say was that the needs assessment is a, not a once off chance uh, to get your supports. You're welcome to come back and review your supports at any time. So students, sometimes when we meet students, it's very early on in the, in the year. Um, and they're not really sure what exactly they're going to need because they don't know what they're going to be doing or whether or not they're going to find it difficult. So we encourage students to come back to us at any time to review those supports. So we, even if we don't get them quite right at the needs assessment, we can update them and make sure that they are working for you throughout your degree programme. Yeah. I think that's all of our questions now, Julie. Okay, that's great. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody um, attending today. You will be sent um, this presentation and also the slides as well. So when you registered, you would have given us your email address. So you'll receive that. And we'll also have a whole series of these webinars taking place over the next um, couple of weeks. So please have a look at our website. And if there's anything else you're interested in, you might be, uh, like to join us for those as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you now. Bye.